Hi, today I'm going to show you how I would dilate a surface object using distance transformation. So first I will turn on just my fluorescent signal so you can see what we're working with. I'm going to base my surface objects on just this simple nuclear staining here. Um, so I'll just first create my base surface object based on the nucleus. I don't need to have any of these options turned on because it's not important for this step. I'll select my channel of interest and then just create my surface object like you would normally do. Once that surface object is created, I will then use this surface object to create a distance transformation channel. So underneath the Edit tab, select Mask All. I'm using Channel 2 as my channel of interest. And then the Distance Transform. And now you can see over here, I have a new channel that's created. I'm just going to color it differently so it's a little bit easier to see what I'm working with. And I'm going to color the bottom of my intensity um, profile black so I can see where we are closest within that surface. And then once I have that distance transformation colored how I would like, I'm going to go back and now create a new surface object that is based on this distance transformation channel. So I'm going to select the correct source image to align to, and that's going to be image to that distance transformation channel. And then I'm in the slicer rendering mode. Uh, as you can see, as I move through the Z stack, that the areas inside of like where my original surfaces are, those will be colored black, meaning that they're inside like where that distance transformation channel was was created. And so once I have that in, I will then now create my dilation surface. And the way I go about doing that is first remove any type of smoothing factor. And you need to be using thresholding that's based on absolute intensity, um, not background subtraction. And then here, if I want my surface to just to be to exclude anything that is within this first surface channel, I will set the bottom of the threshold to zero. And then I can select this top of the threshold to be whatever I want it to be dilated to. Um, so if I want it to be like equal to two pixels, this would all be dependent on what my pixel size is. So under edit image properties, you can look at what the pixel size would be. And so my pixel size is about 0.5 microns. Um, so if I set the top of the threshold to about one, that's going to be about a two pixel diameter around what that first surface would be. And so that's a dilation. Now, if I want my surface I'm creating to include what was in this first surface, I would just turn this lower part of the threshold off and you can see here that it automatically changes it to a negative value, meaning that the inside of that surface is going to be considered in this new surface that I'm creating. Otherwise I can just select it to be zero if I only want it to go like in a perimeter around it. And so as we move through Z, you can see that looks like maybe these two are touching each other, the surfaces there. Um, so that, that might not necessarily work for every um, application. Okay, and then we can turn off looking at that volume and then just look at the actual surfaces that were created. And so these will be uh, donut shaped because I did exclude any of the surface creation within the structure. Um, so you can see how that was created there. And so right here, 
you can see that th these two surfaces are actually considered one. So I could then manually cut these um, if I wanted to underneath this uh, drawing tab. Uh, you can't actually use seed points with this method, and the reason would be the, because the seed points would be based on this distance transformation channel. And with the distance transformation channel, you can see that I don't have signal intensity within the objects that I would want to be able to place the seed points in. Like all of my signal intensity is out here in the periphery, so that's where the seed points would be placed. So it wouldn't actually work to do seed points, but you still do have the option of doing uh, manual cutting there if you have, you know, objects that should not be um, together but are actually segmented as one object. And so yeah, that's how I would use the distance transformation tool to create a dilation around my original surface of interest. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.